and it's not attached to the phone, obviously, but that's the point. That's what allows you to remove it and get access to that removable battery and the micro SD card slot. But it feels solid, and as soon as you put it back on the phone, you're good. So overall, nothing can change the fact that this phone is still big, right? It's a 5.7 inch display. And of course you add bezels, you add the home button, you add the earpiece, and you're again pushing the limits of what people will accept as a phone, something you can put in your pocket. So what's interesting about it is it's the same vertical height roughly as the iPhone 6 Plus, but it's a bit thicker to house that huge battery that I'll talk about in a second, and a bit wider from left to right. But for some reason, when going from the iPhone 6 Plus to the Note 4, the Note felt kind of compact despite having a larger display, which is weird. But I want to talk about this display. It is pretty gorgeous. The Galaxy Note 4 is rocking a 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display. So it's big, bright, super high resolution, super sharp. It has great outdoor visibility, super vibrant colors in basically any environment, has great viewing angles, great responsiveness. Basically, it's the best display on any smartphone right now. The best one. I've used a lot, and this is the one, I mean, it's it's extremely saturated. It's not totally accurate. Yes, it has a strange pixel matrix, but I love this display because it's the only one left that still impresses me every time I turn it on. It's a big part of why I love this phone so much. So crispy. And then it's up to TouchWiz on top of Android 4.4 on this guy to utilize all this space, this huge screen. Now, when you talk about software on these Quad HD phones, which have really all been Android phones for the most part, there have been very few apps that totally take advantage of all those pixels. Of course, you know, there's Samsung's properties, so you get their crazy high resolution wallpapers and their icons and the whole TouchWiz user interface. Everything there is optimized. But if you were expecting to download a whole bunch of games or watch a whole bunch of videos that are going to look way better than they do on 1080p phones, not so fast. I mean, we're still waiting for that. It's still going to look good. It's still a big, bright, beautiful display. But yeah, most games and apps out there are still scaling from 1080p. Actually, the one thing that looks better from a higher resolution point of view is web browsing. So all the text and images are definitely sharper and you can at least notice that and appreciate it. Now, if you've used or you're coming from another Samsung phone like a Note 2 or a Note 3 or a Galaxy S3 or S4, the software experience here is going to be really familiar. Samsung's added features, of course, and now it's on top of the latest version of Android, but it's actually promised to get Android 5.0 Lollipop in a couple of weeks. So of course that will be skinned like this and it'll look nothing like stock Android and it'll continue to look like TouchWiz. But TouchWiz still has the quirks I mentioned when I reviewed the Galaxy S5. Now I'll preface this by saying my model, I, I got very tired of Samsung's launcher and keyboard. So I installed Google Now Launcher and a few keyboards, but everything else here is stock. And for the most part, performance is great, as you would expect from a phone with a quad core Snapdragon 805 chip and three gigs of RAM and a super high end GPU. Most stuff flies. In-app performance is great. Scrolling frame rates and gaming frame rates and just navigating through the UI in general is very fast. So performance is awesome. The only thing that seemed slow pretty consistently is when I press the multitasking button, there was always a brief pause before it opened my carousel. And then another pause after I click the app and it waits a second before it brings me in. It's a little slow. Honestly, the occasional touch with jank lag is there when you're pulling down the notification tray too fast or something, uh, but that's usually few and far between. So it's a very fast phone other than the occasional touch with jank. Now, when you have a huge phone with top-notch specs like this and a massive, gorgeous, super sharp display, you really wanna take advantage of not just the extra pixels, but the whole package. So the one thing Samsung has been improving from generation to generation of the Note lineup is the multitasking options. So of course you still have the familiar holding down the back button and being able to use two apps at once. So you split the display in half uh, between two of the supported apps. And this multitasking mode is smoother than ever before. It's just as useful since the display is so big. But you can copy and paste text and information back and forth between the panels. It's more than just two apps at once, so it's really great. But a new multitasking feature they've added is windowed apps. So you can, with again, supported apps, drag down from the corner of the phone, the top corner, to move your app into a windowed size on top of everything else. And you can resize it and reposition it wherever you want, and it stays a live app the whole time, so you can interact with it and keep it over stuff in the background, and everything still works. So you can also minimize them into these little icon bubbles when you hit the home screen and activate them anytime you want by tapping on them again. So you can have multiple windowed apps open at the same time over the top of whatever you're doing, which is pretty nuts if you ask me. 
Uh, but this is the kind of stuff Samsung has been doing and building in to take advantage of the larger display with all these extra pixels. Support for this windowed stuff is still a small list of apps, kind of like the half screen stuff. Uh, so sometimes you'll pull down from the corner window and it just won't work. It actually happened to me a bunch of times. Also, I'll, I'll be one handing the phone and I'll go to pull down the notification tray from the corner by accident and it'll shrink down the app I'm using or tell me it's not supported. I don't know, it's an interesting feature with a slightly confusing implementation at first, but it can be really useful in some niche situations. I think people will really like this when they get to know it. So my battery life experience on the Note 4 has been a little interesting. So I started off with the international version of the Note 4. It's a Korean phone, it has different radios in it, it's looking for different signals than the US version would, and it has an Exynos chip inside, so it's a slightly different spec model. But it's a Note 4 nevertheless, but I was getting not so hot battery life. A little bit concerning that I had to plug in before the end of the day. I was getting three to four hours of screen on time, which is a lot less than I would expect out of a phone with a 3,220 milliamp hour battery. But then I switched over to the one from AT&T. So I finally got my hands on the US version of the Galaxy Note 4. So it has all the correct radios now. It also now has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 chip instead of the Exynos chip. And uh, I was just blown away by the battery life. So the battery improved significantly. I started getting six and a half hours of screen on time. Uh, never had to plug in before the end of the day with the AT&T model. So if you're getting it in the United States, obviously grab it from a carrier. Uh, and you will have absolutely no issues with the battery life on the Note 4. So I'm happy to report, thumbs up. I initially had concerns that I was tweeting about, but those are all gone now. So awesome battery life on the Note 4. Also, as a bonus, even though they downgraded the charging port back to USB 2.0, you get fast charging, and that gets you half a charge in half an hour of being plugged into the wall. So not bad for 30 minutes to charge. And all of this comes with a phone that's just 8.5 millimeters thick. So it's not even that much thicker than the thinnest phones out there. So now the last major change to the Galaxy Note 4 is the new camera. So it's a 16 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and also you get 4K video. And it takes honestly the best imagery of any Samsung phone yet. So the characteristics of a photo out of this camera would be really vibrant photos and really sharp photos. And honestly, it becomes super obvious with this image processing that Samsung is trying to sharpen everything in the shot. It basically applies a sharpening filter over every image you take, which can look pretty decent sometimes, but even in a photo with a clear subject and a clear background that should be blurred and out of focus, it still tries to sharpen everything. So you end up sharpening the bokeh and getting these weird artifacts on things that aren't supposed to be sharp. And honestly, with 16 megapixels to play with, I don't think you need to do that much sharpening at all. I wish they would tone that down. It does take some very great looking vibrant photos though, especially in daytime light. Uh, and it gets a decent amount of dynamic range even without turning on that super overdone HDR mode. So I think people are gonna like this camera in most situations, just like the Galaxy S5 camera or the Note 3 camera. And of course, 4K video and stabilization is a deadly combo. So you could be shooting wide here in 4K, check out that zoom. Plus the optical image stabilization, OIS helps me stay locked on whatever subject I'm at. So I'm 20 yards away from these guys. But again, since it's 4K, I'm not losing that much detail. I'm practically zoomed in on a 720p image of the frame. And then zooming back out, of course, will reveal the whole 4K image. But it's pretty impressive stuff for just a camera and a smartphone. And yes, it is still sharpened 4K video, but it's gonna look pretty good anyway. So there are some new other features of the Galaxy Note 4 that I don't use so much, like a slightly improved heart rate reader on the back. That monitor still works. Uh, the slightly improved fingerprint reader on the front. Again, I don't use that on the home button that much, but it's better. Uh, slightly improved speaker on the back. Oh, and a slightly improved S Pen, in case we forgot what the Note series is all about. It's all about having a stylus and a big screen. So here's a rundown of the S Pen, just so we have it. You take it out of the back of the phone and it displays four options on the screen. You get action memo, smart select, image clip, and screen write. And you can even hover the stylus over the display to see the names of these and make your selection. So screen write takes a screenshot of whatever's on your display and then lets you write on it and crop it, rotate it, whatever, save it for later, which is nice. Smart select does something similar. It captures whatever is in your selection and does its best to translate it into text or something usable for saving or sharing. Image Clip lets you make a free selection of anything on your screen and share that. And Action Memo brings up a quick post-it post, post -it note and then you can write on that post-it and save it into S Note. Otherwise, you can use it just like you would for your finger, swiping around, moving in and out of apps, typing stuff. It's basically the same functionality 
as the previous stylus, checking notifications. You can even touch the capacitive buttons too and it'll respond to that. So at the end of the day, I have no problem saying that the Galaxy Note 4 is the best phone Samsung's ever made. And of course it should be, it's their latest phone. People say this all the time but it's the best display on the market and it's one of the best built phones you can get right now. It has an awesome battery life. The specs are top notch, higher than any other Samsung device they've put out in a long time. So this is the best phone I think Samsung has ever made. Uh, and I would have no problem recommending it to anyone searching for a large Android phone. Obviously it's a lot bigger than some others, but it still feels more compact in the hand, like I've said, than other 5.5 inch to six inch phones. So in the phablet territory, as much as I hate the word, this is really the front runner right now, and I have no problem recommending the Note 4. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, feel free to hit the thumbs up button below. Also, the subscribe button below should be red. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.